So I was on Twitter this last week and I made a video about Dale Partridge's tweet that was just really, really bad. And you can go, if you're watching on the replay, you can click probably somewhere. I'll put it in the card about how uh, this idea of self-harm, um, it, that it loses your salvation essentially is his take. And that is a pretty awful tweet. But to be honest, that's kind of his whole shtick. And I have waited kind of on the sidelines. And this is this is a few different people that do this. They go onto Twitter and they just tweet. I have to imagine like the, the meanest thing that they could think of. Like, or at least the, they don't put any nuance in anything. They say it as boldly as possible and as bluntly as possible. And really with the hope that it will be divisive to people, that people will be upset. Like that's, that's the only conclusion that I can get from people who tweet like Dale Partridge tweets. Uh, and so I've been looking at this guy and a part of me doesn't want to make this video because I don't want people like this who desperately want the attention. Like that's why you do that with your Twitter. You, you say the most outlandish things that no one's talking about, by the way, this isn't just like responding to something or saying, Hey, what this guy said was wrong or something like that. He, he's starting conversations that no one else is having about the most obscure things and saying, Hey, like you must agree with me and it's an issue of orthodoxy or something like he does that all the time. Owen Strand does the same thing. There's a bunch of guys who go onto Twitter and maybe you've heard their sermons and you think, Oh, those sermons are pretty good. But if you go onto Twitter and you look at their tweets, you know, I'm right. They're trying to be divisive. And so for a long time, I've kind of like looked at this guy and I had a few things to say when it was the issue about public school versus homeschooling. I mean, I had that on a, on a Theo live now underdog theology. Um, but on an episode, we, we talked quite a bit about that. And I took a few minutes to talk about Dale Partridge and I'm doing that again. Because I think that a lot of people have given this guy a pass uh, because of the people that he knows and the people that he associates himself with. And some of the things that he says, a lot of people actually like, you know, as far as like the topics he wants to talk about. Like right now, actually, he's gearing up to do a conference on theonomy, which is a really popular topic in some spheres of Christianity. And within those spheres, he's saying a lot of things that are very popular. And so he's gaining more and more of a following. He's one of those guys, though, that I look at and go, why? Like some people you can understand. All right. I'm going to be I'm going to be a little bit. A little bit bolder than I usually am when I'm talking about this guy and a little bit about his character because I think it's a little bit more evident than you would see with people like, like Vody Bauckham or uh, even John MacArthur and other people. I think that his is on full display. Um, I don't know why this guy is being listened to because there's, there's a lot to look at. Now, if you're like, who is this Dale Partridge guy? Let me, let me take you to his website. This is his website. This is not, Someone making a fake website and saying it for him. All right. Author, preacher, and church reformer. These are the words that he chose to talk about himself. All right. Um, not great. All right. You could be an author. Awesome. You know, you write books. Fantastic. You could be a preacher. Okay. If you're qualified, go and be a preacher. Uh, church reformer? Uh-uh. Okay. Like, you're not a church reformer. I don't even, like, what does that even mean? But he thinks that he's a church reformer. So he's, I, I, I need you to understand that as we're moving forward. He thinks that he's someone that's here to kind of shake people awake and to tell them the truth that they desperately need. That's what I'm assuming by calling yourself a church reformer. Now, the problem with Dale Partridge, as we'll look at this, is there's a lot of deception with Dale Partridge. Like we're going to get into some of this stuff. We're going, we're going a little bit deeper into who this guy is than we normally do. Um, Dale Partridge was, <laughs> let's, uh, let's go over here. And he was an entrepreneur. 
Uh, this was uh, an article from Christianity Today. Christian influencer Dale Partridge shares inspirational quotes, but they weren't all his. Now, he is well known for starting Sevenly, a social good clothing company that claimed to raise millions for charity. Partridge has attracted hundreds of thousands of social media followers with his knack for spotting social trends and for his nearly endless supply of motivational sayings, perfect for a t-shirt or Instagram post. So this guy, at least up until 20, I think it was 2014, 2015, he was an entrepreneur and he, a Christian, uh, Christian businessman, like that's fine. Um, you can, you can do that. You can even, you know, go and be on platforms and speak as a, as a Christian businessman. That's fantastic. You make money. Awesome. Uh, the problem with that, uh, is a few things. One I'll point out is that this, uh, raising of millions for charity, you can't actually find that out. Now I'm not saying he didn't, but it's kind of weird that you can't actually see that. And that's why Christianity Today, there's a bunch of different articles about it. Uh, but that's why Christianity Today says claimed to raise millions for charity. Um, but there's there's a lot to this. So basically what he would do uh, earlier on, so this is like 2015 to 2020, uh, he would go online and he'd have all kinds of uh, inspirational things for, for his followers. Uh, different quotes. Uh, different quotes from all different kinds of people, not just theological, but, uh, just in the world. Uh, Muhammad Ali, I remember seeing that one as far as like one being claimed of plagiarism. And that's been at least the main thing that has been talked about with him is that he has constantly, uh, gone through and plagiarized these other people saying that it was his. Now, sometimes he would say it as, uh, I've heard it said, or, uh, I've said it like this before. And it's kind of not just like, this is my original thought, but most of the time it was said as if it was his. And he did this with not just like a couple, but a lot, a lot uh, of different, uh, different tweets. And then there was even the issue as I'm trying to find it here. Uh, there was the issue of his book. Uh, that he he was saying all kinds of things about his book. Yes. Um, let's see. Right in here. Until recently, the site included uh, a quote promoting Partridge's Real Christianity book that was attributed to Richard Jennings of Dallas Theological Seminary. Uh, this, so this is what it said. This book is like a splash of warm water on your face. The quote read, you still got the, uh, you still get the shock of being wet without the sting of cold words. It's direct, it's bold, but most of all, it's accurate to the scriptures. However, and that's where things turn. <laughs> However, a spokesman for Dallas Theological Seminary said that the school has no record of a faculty member, student, or staff member by that name on a recent episode of the real christianity podcast partridge's wife veronica partridge and they do they do tons of stuff together uh veronica partridge read the endorsement aloud this time citing its author as richard davis dale partridge told rns uh religion news surface services i think that as far as he is aware davis does not exist either the quote praising the book he said was a mock quote used during the design of the store on the Relearn Church website. When the site went live, the mock quote was published online and then later recopied for his podcast notes as Richard Davis. Okay, see, see there's, there's a lot of fishy, fishy stuff going on right now. Because, uh, like, I can understand. Like, when you're building a website, I've built, actually, I've built a lot of websites, and sometimes you put in stuff there, like an image or some text that is just like a placeholder. And then you're going to replace it later. And sometimes you forget. That happens. What doesn't happen is you taking that, changing the name, and putting it into your podcast as if it was that. Like, first off, kind of weird to be just like putting that into the podcast. 
But if you're going to do that, there's there's thought going there. Now, maybe, just maybe, you might be able to be like, okay, I could see how this might have gotten away from him. Maybe he just didn't look at that quote. Maybe he just accidentally changed the name. Um, you know, maybe all of that's true. But we're also dealing with someone who is a plagiarist and obviously doesn't care. Like, he has said things like there's nothing new under the sun, uh, that, uh, you know, all of this is truth, so what, who, why does it even matter who it comes from? Those are the kinds of excuses that Dale Partridge has given over the years for his plagiarism. And again, like, when we're talking about this, we're talking about 2020, all right? This is 2020 that this book came out. I remember seeing prominent people. This is actually probably the first thing that I saw from Dale Partridge was because of this book uh, and people promoting this book. Uh, not anyone named Richard Jennings or Richard Davis, but other people saying like, hey, you should go and read this book. So this this is very troubling. But then, you know, we got we to gotta look at a few other things because when you're talking about this guy, you're like, all right, where did he come from? All right, he came from the business world. That's that's fine. That's the one thing, whatever. So what what about church? Where does he come from with that? Well, he comes from the house church movement, and he's been kind of like the spearhead of that. And, you know, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with house churches, so don't get me wrong on that part. But it's the thing about movements and being trying to, like when you're calling yourself a church reformer, like there, there's, there's inherently just even in calling yourself that there's, there's pride just inherently in that, that thing. I would never, I would never call myself a church reformer. None of my friends, none of my, none, none of my buddies, I don't think would, would be like, Oh, I'm going to put that on my website. Like that's, that's a very odd thing to describe yourself as. And I think it speaks to the mentality of someone who would use that phrase, for themselves and then spearheading some of these movements like that's that's troubling because why couldn't you fit into a movement now sometimes there's things that happen you can't be a part of something and you kind of find yourself on the outside i totally understand that at the same time when you're like everyone else has it wrong and i need to do something about it like starting reformation seminary all right he's leaning heavy into this reformed stuff but the the odd thing about this so this is really about house churches uh that's his big thing with reformation he wants there to be like a reformation in how we do church and focusing on house churches and real discipleship <coughs> excuse me uh still getting over that um but like he's he's really focusing on all this stuff about being a reformer so you might be like okay well this guy's obviously reformed then right wrong uh uh look look over here all right so this was in 2020 this is his testimony that he has on his website it was on a family road trip in january 2020 from oregon to southern california that landed me in a pew on a sunday evening listening to a sermon by a preacher named mike riccardi i talked about him on um uh, underdog theology on monday on the doctrine of union Mike was one of the pastors at Grace Community Church led by John MacArthur. Later, he goes on to talk about this being his awakening to the doctrines of grace. So, this guy, who became a Calvinist in 2020, starts Reformation Seminary and is now trying to talk. He's on a, a speaking circuit to talk about theonomy. He's going to go down to Texas and be with the Right Response Ministries guy and uh, talk about theonomy with, uh, is James White going there? Something, something like that. Like those kinds of, of speakers. He's going down there and speaking about this when he became a Calvinist in 2020. Now, like there's nothing wrong with switching teams, okay? Like I'm a Calvinist. So obviously, like if you want to be a Calvinist, like uh, that's, I would, I would like that. Like, I would really like that. You should, you should come and join my team. That'd be fun. But at the same time, if someone is switching 
and then goes and starts calling himself a church reformer, starts an institution called Reformation Seminary, and and now wants to go and speak on uh, conference platforms, and is writing all these books about reform theology after he became a Calvinist two years ago. Like, that's weird. That's super weird. This guy is going out and he's talking about things that he doesn't know, that he hasn't experienced. And I think this gets into his whole thing. Like, all of this is wrapped up together with this guy. I've watched. I've watched him tweet the most awful things that... I mean, you just have to either be just an incredibly rude person or just incredibly naive to think that no one else is going to get offended by it. But knowing him and how tech savvy he is and how much of a following he has gathered, like, uh, I think that he knows what he's doing. It's the same thing for Owen Strand. Like these guys, they, they tweet their things for a reason, because they know that they're going to get people who are going to quote tweet them, trying to show them where they're wrong, trying to prove that uh, they're false about something. So they're going to get the people that love it because there are going to be people that love those things. And then they're going to get people who are mediocre about it and maybe hit the like and they don't fully understand. And they're also going to get the hate tweets and that will just boost them through the algorithm. These people know that. So this guy, the plagiarism, all of this stuff wrapped in. And, oh, and I forgot to mention something. All right. Like, I don't want to be a stickler about education because uh, I'm not. I don't think you have to go to seminary to be a pastor. Uh, I do think it would actually be wise to be seminary trained if you're going to be on a platform. Like, if you're going to be going out and teaching a bunch of pastors, I would probably say you probably should have gone to seminary. Um that being said, like, I don't think you have to go to seminary, but he started a seminary. The guy doesn't have a graduate degree. I don't know what other degree he has because he's, he's talked about a few things. He, he has, I've, I've done a lot of research on this guy. Okay. I did it when I was like about two months ago and I talked about him and homeschooling and all of that. Um, <clears throat> did some more this week. But this guy, he, he talks about his education as, oh, my, my five years of seminary taught me this. Well, if you're just listening to that and you're not me, because when I hear those kind of words, I go like, wait, what? It shouldn't have taken you that long, right? Like, and it took me a long time. So I, I know the words that you use to try to be like, oh, I don't want to go through how I haven't finished my degree yet. I understand that language. Uh, so when I heard it, I was like, uh, but my five years of seminary taught me this, or, you know, I got my education. He uses words like I conducted my education at Western seminary at, um, master's seminary. And now at, um, uh, strip mall seminary, what it was, uh, strands seminary grace. It's not grace Baptist. Is it? It's grace Bible. Uh, theological seminary, I think is the name of that. Uh, but he's going there. I don't know what degree he's going to get, but he's talked about how he's going to get a degree there to my knowledge. All right. I could be wrong, but to my knowledge, this is his education. All right. The, the master stuff, he ended that. All right. He did not finish at master. So I don't, I don't know how long that ago that was, if it's updated or not. I do know that this is accurate. This graduate study certificate. I looked that up. That is 15 credit hours. All right. So we're talking about someone who is deceptive about his quotation of people. And if he can get away with it, he is going to go and, uh, you know, say, you know, what this person said is his own. Like he's done that a bunch. There's tons of things that people haven't called him out on it. And he's done that. So he's deceptive about those things. He's deceptive about his level of education. A guy who doesn't have like at least an MDiv should not be starting a seminary or anything that's called a seminary. I don't care if you're just like, well, it's not a real seminary. I know. Uh, but at the same time, you don't call it a seminary. Uh, this, this guy is deceptive about all these things. He's new to reform theology. 
He doesn't know it. Not yet. People like that who switch teams should take a season and sit back a little bit. Like I've been a Calvinist for 10 years. All right. I didn't start talking about Calvinism. Now, like there's part of like the cage stage thing. And like, that's, that's a whole different conversation. Uh, but when you're a pastor and you, you don't want to push Calvinism to people like right out of the gate, or at least you shouldn't because you don't know a whole lot about it. All right. You are learning. Take a back seat a little bit. Don't pretend to be an expert. Don't call yourself a church reformer and don't start reformation seminary. All right. Like don't, don't act like you're a reformed scholar, even though you became a Calvinist in 2020. Like this guy is deceptive as all get out. I think that people should head for the Hills with this guy. Do not listen to him. It is abundantly clear from what he has done in his ministry to what he is focusing on to the tweets that he makes, that he does not genuinely care about his followers. He says incredibly harsh things with no nuance whatsoever, incredibly legalistic things, things lacking any depth in reform theology. And he says that he's an expert. He's not head for the Hills with this guy. He is a dangerous teacher. Someone like this, who has, you know, swung the pendulum and the whole time is screaming to the hilltops about what he believes and how he should be someone who is, you know, listened to by others. Someone like that, it's only a matter of time before he swings on to something else. Now, what's that going to be? I don't know, but I don't think we want to wait to find out. So don't, don't listen to this guy. Avoid his teaching. If you like his teaching, Go find it from someone else, someone who is qualified, who doesn't use deceitful language, who isn't a plagiarist, who isn't constantly trying to make him himself look like he's super important and a big deal and a church reformer. Go listen and find someone else. There are tons of people out there, good preachers, who will give you that whatever that thing that you're getting from Dale Partridge is, they'll be able to give you that. Just not, not this guy. All right, you can... You can do better. We can all do better. Dale Partridge, you could do better. You're a media guy. I've figured out that media guys kind of like to watch when someone is talking about them. I did see that tweet, by the way. I think, I don't know, maybe that's just my pride, but I think you were tweeting about something that I said. Uh, so you might be watching this. Dale, maybe it's time to take a back seat a little bit. Just learn for a little while. You can write your books, your kids' books. I'm sure that those are those are fine. Like you can do all those different kinds of ministry things. But can you please, at the very least, Dale, could you get rid of this part? Like this church reformer bit? It's a big L, bro. A big L. It's just so calming. Oh hey. Uh didn't see you there. Uh, but the fact that you're here means that you watch the whole video. That's awesome. So might as well hit the like button. Uh, also, uh, maybe share it. If you really, really like this video, go on to Facebook and, and share it with Aunt Jill. Be like, Aunt Jill, you really need to hear this because we all know Aunt Jill's pretty messed up. She might want to watch this video too. I don't know what it is, but we all know Aunt Jill needs it.